morning. It's Friday, April 23rd, 2021. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Hard Times and Growing Churches, and our scripture is Acts chapter 4. While Peter and John were speaking to the people, they were confronted by the priests, the captain of the temple guard, and some of the Sadducees. These leaders were very disturbed that Peter and John were teaching the people that through Jesus there is resurrection of the dead. They arrested them, and since it was already evening, put them in jail until morning. But many of the people who heard their message believed it, so the number of men who now believed totaled about 5,000. The experience of the early church included growing like a supernova, an exploding star. Pentecost Day saw 3,000 souls baptized and added to the church role. This short time later, the number was up to 5,000 men. If you add the men's households to that count, the first church was a megaforce of probably 20,000 people. Of course, with any substantial explosion, think nuclear bombs, there's always great heat, light, and percussive fallout. For Peter and John, healing a paraplegic on the temple steps was like igniting the fuse. It set off two explosions. The church grew like an atomic blast epicenter, and the established religious leaders retaliated by lighting a backfire of persecution. We read in the scriptures and annals of church historians how that season of explosive growth and rejection by the leaders of the Jewish hierarchy touched off the Roman Empire's obsessive persecution of the church. An unintended consequence accompanied that attempt to stamp out the followers of Jesus. Their persecution was like pouring water on a grease fire. Believers fled Jerusalem and traveled all over the known world, eventually spreading to the very center of persecution, Rome. Paul was sitting in a Roman prison, chained to the kind of Roman soldiers that put Jesus on the cross. Paul used those days and nights to witness to and win many of Caesar's guard to faith in Christ. How ironic that the very government obsessed with destroying Christianity became the place that embraced it. In the days of Peter, John, James, Paul, and others in the roll call of the faithful, religious freedom was dependent on the whim of powerful rulers. In most of the civilized world today, religious freedom is taken for granted. Most prayers you hear, particularly around July the 4th, thank God for that freedom. Now, while I also offer thanks for that, I cannot shake the uneasiness of knowing that the church, birthed with the blood of Christ and matured in revival fires started by persecution, has lost the will to persevere. Institutionalized by our love of ceremony and routines of ease, we've managed to quench the Spirit's call to passionately labor, unceasingly giving our lives, if called upon, to win souls for the kingdom. Hard times and growing churches have always been garden mates. Hard times are like a pottery kiln to the church's need for fire finishing. We go through fire to show the majesty of Christ and his mastery of eternity. It's the hard time of winter ice that produces the bloom of spring and the harvest of summer. As ironic as Paul leading the early church while sitting in a Roman dungeon, imprisoned by a pagan emperor and winning souls even of Caesar's household, is the church of today languishing in the bohemian luxury of religious freedom, tax exemptions, sewing circles, and yearly antique car shows with auctions. The only hard times of the church are generally the internal strife we create ourselves over whether to have red or blue carpet in the sanctuary. In the days following the persecutions of Nero and Domitian, It was the believers, not the apostles, who scattered everywhere telling people how to be saved. Today, we're too sophisticated to do that. We'd rather not offend people. Funny, isn't it? We don't want to offend, so we don't proclaim Jesus. 
How is that even possible to make the leap from what gave power to the early church to what passes for being Christ's disciple today? We manage to escape the harsh glance of people who consider proclaiming Christ foolish and offensive so we don't go through hard times. But what we suffer in doing that is losing the very power of God. For you today, let's let one who understood hard times and kingdom power have the last word. Paul wrote to the Corinthian believers, The message of the cross is foolish to those who are headed for destruction. But we who are being saved know it is the very power of God. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.